Hi, and welcome to uh, our Dwelling in the Word for this week. I'm Pastor Hill, and this is... Pastor Joanna Gray. We're from Mount Horeb Lutheran Church here in Chapin, and we are in the midst of week four of Advent. Uh, yesterday, or this past Sunday, I mean, we heard uh, special lessons for the fourth Sunday in Advent, and today we want to dwell on the gospel reading for that day. And our hope for you is that as you prepare for Christmas this week, that you'll um, dwell in this word and hear God something special that God has in store for you. So you ready to get down yes. to it? All right. Well, let's read the lesson for this past Sunday, the gospel lesson, which Pastor Joanna did a wonderful job preaching on. And it's the Holy Gospel according to Luke, uh, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there wouldn't be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. That there would be a fulfillment. And Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor upon the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He scattered the proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's helped the servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. So, praise to you, Christ. That's I right. Get those mixed up. So as we hear this and as we dwell in this word, you know, we ask the questions about dwelling, which is what kind of jumps out at you? And then what questions might the passage raise for you? And then finally, do you feel a kind of a nudge that yeah. says, um, wow, what is my faith kind of calling me to do or respond to this? How about you? What did you? So it jumps out to me as part of Mary's song. Uh, where is it? I pointed to it earlier. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Because of the, I know, I can get a little bit too scholastic or academic sometimes, but because the Greek that I got to study in preparation for the sermon, um, the tense matters, and done great things for me is important in that, um, what, why it jumps out to me is because Mary is recognizing the goodness and the blessings that she already has been given, but also that her community, her whole people before her, all of her ancestors have already experienced. So that is important to me because it's the blessing of community and faith. Yeah. How great. about you? That's great. What jumps out to you? Yeah. So what jumps out at me as I read this, uh, this time, uh, is first of all, just knowing that God has already done something and here they mm -hmm. are coming together to kind of as a community because yeah, you need right, another right. person to kind of help this resonate. It's almost like there's a, a witness to what's going on here. Mm -hmm. um, but once God has done something, it seems like to me as I read this, two things happen. And it's all about how Elizabeth responded and then how Mary responds to Elizabeth's response. It's almost like they're saying, oh, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. And mm -hmm. then somebody says something a little deeper, and it's like, oh, we're going to be, like, honest about this. And yeah. so it's, I'm sure there was that kind of greeting, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Oh, my gosh, this baby jumped in my womb. Look at that. That's... And then all of a sudden, Mary, because of that, she's finally able to unload this burden. So the two things of, of keeping the secret. So the yeah. two things that kind of remind me of, of this is that, mm -hmm. one, after God does something, there is some kind of a experience that we have. Um, that we feel something out of our ability is happening mm -hmm. to us that God is something that God has done. And then the second thing is that um, as a result, there is a, a deep-seated and a soulful kind of a sense 
of peace, maybe, or in here it's Mary, Mary rejoices finally. Mm -hmm. You know, she's probably been grieving almost. What does this mean for me as a young girl to mm -hmm. be pregnant, not quite yet married, and all of a sudden to be holding on to that and then realizing, you know what, this is God doing and we're going to rejoice in it. So those are the, that's my immediate kind of observation. Yeah, and I wonder if, we talked about this yesterday in Sunday school, if Mary and Elizabeth knew before they greeted one another, or if, if when they greeted one another, is when they found out each of them were pregnant. Yeah, and so if it was them just kind of discovering this in the moment, yeah. that even makes it a more pregnant moment. You know, where there's a, a lot of, a, a lot right. of stuff going on there. And, so the, that's kind and of the joy then is a natural, the song that Mary sings is a natural out, outgrowth yeah. reaction. And when you think about that and read it in that mm -hmm. tone, it's almost like I, I kind of get joy from watching people experiencing joy. You know, it's, it's yeah. like it's contagious yeah, it is. and it passes on. Um, and so the thing that, that kind of jumped out at me, because this always raises questions, that's part of our mm -hmm. thing, is what, um, what are the questions this might raise? We talked about when did they or how did they experience it? At what time did they not know about mm -hmm. it until then? Um, the questions that I had also were the ones that, you know, Elizabeth raises this question in verse... Um, 43, she says, why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? And I think that's a question we have when God has done something, we begin to experience it. Uh, and one of our professors at seminary used to say there are magic questions that you ask when something happens like this, and it's why me, why now? Mm -hmm. And so Elizabeth's going, why me? Why is this happening to me? And there's something neat about um, just being in a moment where you're feeling that question coming up. Why is this thing that's deeply touching my soul, that is happening to me beyond my ability, why is this good thing happening? Right. And uh, what does that mean? And the important thing with the why me, why now is like us turning to God and 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 um, recognizing God in in that moment. Yeah. So why me, why now, God? And uh, we can take that lesson or that piece of faith from Elizabeth and Mary's story. Yeah, that's great. And so the nudge then, what do you think? Is there a nudge that you get from this? Uh, a lot of good nudges. Yeah, leap for joy jumps out at me because you said it earlier. And uh, a lot of people will be leaping for joy this coming week, waking up with their families on Christmas morning. Yeah. Uh, I know it's still Advent. Forgive me for mentioning Christmas already. But we're getting close. Yeah, yeah. The joy is. But is then, great. but then, nudge, I suppose, is also in the in the joy that comes from um, God's true true things, like what we've talked about all Advent: peace, hope, love, joy. Um, and I think we can we can turn around, you know, look at those over and over again throughout the throughout the Advent season, but also all church season yeah. long. Yeah. And the nudge for me is, I think, um, I have to ask the question for me, am I seeing this story and this life that I'm a part of with with my worldly eyes or am I seeing it through yeah. God's eyes with a faith lens? And when you see things with a faith lens, it's almost as if you begin to uncover a God that has already promised to be present. So if God yeah. is present in this story, right. then all of a sudden, God might be present in this story, our mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. and right now. And so it makes me want to look around and see what else am I missing that maybe God is already being a part of. And that's kind of joyful, exciting. Yeah, that is it a comfort, joy. and it gives us joy. Yes, yeah. thank you. Well, good. Well, our hope is that as you dwell in this word and as you get ready for Christmas Eve, uh, that we will all celebrate and rejoice in what God has already done, continues to do and promises to be a part of in our living out our lives of faith. So as we close this out, we're going to use the prayer of the day from this past Sunday. Uh, so blessings to you this week, and we look forward to seeing you on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, um, we are having worship on at 11 a.m. Uh, here at the Quiet Communion Service on Christmas Eve, the 24th. And then at 5 o'clock, we're going to have kind of a family-oriented service. And at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock, we'll have a traditional uh, Christmas service. The 7 o'clock will be shown on YouTube, so we invite you to join the Mount Forbes YouTube channel, and you can pick up any Sunday worship there as well. So let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. 
with your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, well, blessings on your week, and we'll see you, hopefully, on Christmas Eve. Happy Advent. Bye-bye.